Hello fellow ESL teachers, this video is for experts living in Vietnam and this video is about my application for work permit and TSC. So if you are considering to do the same or you are in a process, maybe this video will be interesting um, for you as well. One month ago I recorded a first video uh, telling about the beginning of my application process and I promised that I will get back uh, to you with the report how is it progressing uh, in three weeks time when my criminal record check is going to arrive. I am late and I will explain later why I'm late but before I get to that part I would like to explain uh, again or to outline briefly what is this video about. Uh, in order to get a new job I needed to cancel my existing work permit to apply for a new work permit and also I had to renew my TSC. So as I was looking for a new job I was talking to different employers and employers were um, sharing quotes from their corresponding agents how much it will cost to do my paperwork. The prices ranged from 650 to 1250 US dollars for the whole package and it made me worry so I went through all the departments myself to learn about the process and after collecting all the information I thought that I can do it actually on my own if I can find an employer who is going to be supportive. So uh, according to my calculations I would do the whole process within six weeks or even faster within five weeks and I also uh, thought that it will cost me about 200 US dollars. Okay, I found an employer who was willing to get involved in this self-application process because naturally I cannot apply for the work permit, only the employer can. Um, I applied for my um, criminal record check as I needed two documents, work permit and a TSC, I had to get a double copy, so I paid twice, which was 400,000 um, Vietnam Dong all together. And I had to wait for three weeks, there was nothing else to do for me. Uh, I collected all my papers, I assembled all my package. Um, so I moved out of Saigon to a province to my new uh, job placement. And pretty much right away my optimism was shattered. I meant to go back to Saigon on the 15th of June to collect my criminal record check, but as you all know, we suddenly had a lockdown. As soon as I moved out, Saigon was cut out. I couldn't go back. Well, I could go back, some people traveled, even if uh, they were risking to be detained and guaranteed and, and so on. But even if I went back, I could not get my papers because no government department accepted visitors during the lockdown. Now, of course, they have a different um, application process. You can apply online, but it doesn't apply to me because I made my application in person. So, by the law, I had to receive it in person, but I couldn't go to receive it in person. And there I was. I basically stuck. Somehow, phone calls to the Department of Justice caused quite a stir over there. Uh, apparently, I was the only one who wanted to get my papers and nobody knew what to do. Deliberations took, as I thought, forever, <laughs> you know, and it was so frustrating and of course very stressful for me because things were not happening the way I wanted and uh, nobody could give me any answers. But to cut the long story short, if there is a will, there is a way. 
and I got my papers but um, it it was stressful and I learned one thing the word express means different things in English and in Vietnamese I got my papers now while I was waiting for uh, my uh, criminal record check to arrive my employer had to apply for the permission letter or approval letter to employ a foreign specialist and it went very easily um, even well before the letter arrived she knew already that uh, she got an approval because it's a province everybody knows everybody so she was told well in advance that yes uh, she will get that letter and of course I was asking if they are ready to apply because as soon as my um, documents arrive that was the only piece we were waiting for I thought and um, I was assured that yes everything is assembled I provided all the paperwork for my application all the notarized papers stamped you know translated uh, the whole lot everything was submitted to the uh, reception desk to, you know, to the people who are responsible for my application on the day when um, they had to go so my papers arrived next morning I was told they will go to apply for my work permit and um, immigration department in Saigon assured me that as soon as I get a receipt for my work permit I can apply for TSC which is a really urgent matter for me because my TSC is running out of time I have to get my new TSC urgently so when uh, I was told to come in the afternoon but I came in the morning just in case and I did the right thing because my application was ready and basically the whole morning people in the office were calling I don't know where consulting I don't know whom some of my papers happened to be missing so I produced copies because I brought all my spares with me and I did the right thing this is one thing I've learned if you deal with um, Vietnamese colleagues please be prepared to have double, triple, quadruple copies. I thought providing spare notarized copies saved my day. Well, <laughs> I was wrong. It did not. Um, it's good that uh, notarizing documents cost really cheap in Saigon, so I could notarize a lot of copies. Um, we didn't go to apply for my work permit in the morning. It took the whole morning just to put the application together. Eventually, we went in the afternoon and the story repeated. The girl who took my um, notarized copies from me left them on the desk. She decided that we don't need them. Huh? It was lucky that I had my spare copies with me so I could produce a third copy on the spot. And I thought, oh! It saved my day and I was wrong again the story is getting weirder and weirder when the um, Labor Department officer looked at my application she found some um, inconsistencies or something she wasn't happy about first of all she wasn't happy about my master of teaching degree because my master of teaching degree did not state that I uh, teach Tissol. She expected me to produce some CELTA course or TFL course, but I don't have any CELTA course. And this is my third um, work permit in Vietnam, and it's the first time I was asked to prove that I can teach Tissol. I had my academic transcripts with me, so they demanded to translate my academic transcripts notarize them and to submit okay it was another huge delay in the making I was on the verge of being hysterical by then of course and then the uh, labor department officer found another strange thing and that was something I absolutely did not see coming
She looked at, I had to produce my previous work permit, which is still valid and it has to be cancelled. And the letter of um, release from my previous employer. Well, she looked at these two documents and she found a discrepancy between them. They were produced by different companies. So I was employed according to my work permit by one company, but the release letter came from another. And she asked me a question I definitely did not expect. Did you really have a job in Vietnam? Yes, I did. It was a legal job. I can prove it. I have a contract and so on. So that was a shocking question to me. And then I was told that it will take about two weeks to investigate this matter and to find out why I have two different papers um, to verify my employment and termination of my employment. By then, of course, I was practically in tears because I cannot afford extra two weeks. I'm going to become an illegal immigrant. And I have to say, this application process also took about two hours. And the lady, the officer from the Department of Labor, was calling to her colleagues, to other departments, to her boss, uh, to Saigon, head departments, I think to my former employer. I don't know, she, she made so many phone calls. There were so many conversations, which of course I couldn't follow because I don't speak Vietnamese. But oh my God, those were two stressful hours. Um, and the verdict was, I will have to translate my uh, academic transcript. And if I can produce and submit the transcript by Friday, and we went to the Department of Labor on Tuesday. So if I can submit it on Friday, they will accept my application right now, and they will start processing in a good faith that uh, they are going to get papers. Okay, so uh, we had to submit my transcript for uh, translation, and it was another two hour I don't know how to call it, why did it take so long, why they couldn't just accept my papers. But there were so many phone calls to different departments to understand uh, what to translate, how to translate. Oh, that was. There were many bizarre aspects to this story. Uh, one of them, for example, that the document would be translated in my town, but it would be sent to Hanoi to notarize and altogether it would cost me about uh, 400 400,000 but if i wanted to be notarized in our town it would cost me a million huh why why to put a stamp in this very city is much more expensive than to send it to saigon anyway those are the things i never um uh, understood and probably never will understand. Anyway, the bottom line is I still didn't apply officially for my work permit or my employer still technically didn't apply for my uh, work permit and I don't know what is going to happen. Still I thought it was sharing my story. Um, maybe somebody is um, in my situation then you learn something from my experience and you can take steps um, to rectify the potential problems. And of course, please be alarmed that the documents from your employers can be mismatching. And before I finish this video, I would like to share a thought which probably crossed many people's minds before me, but I still I will vocalize it. Uh, I can go through this process because I found an employer who wanted uh, to help me and to help herself. She wanted to chip in. Um, her agent quoted her 750 uh, US dollars, so she was prepared to contribute 300 something um, dollars towards my application process, uh, which is a great gesture and a sign of goodwill. And by the way, I didn't pay for my work uh, permit. 
um, and I will not pay. She is going to pay. Uh, I know it's a small amount. It's only 600,000, but it, it's a good gesture, which I really appreciate. Last year, when I was um, getting employment with ICLC, my previous uh, employer, I actually suggested exactly the same. Can I apply for my work permit myself? Because they quoted me nine and a half million dong. And they told me, no, 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 you cannot, which is true. Now I know that I cannot apply for work permit. Then I suggested maybe you can apply for a work permit. I will do all the work. I will collect all the papers, but uh, just apply for me. And they told, no, 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 we cannot. Uh, only agents can do that. Well, that was a lie because employers can apply, but ICLC was not willing to contribute uh, to this process. Now I'm thinking why they didn't want to do it. Why, before they paid me a single penny, they had to take nine million out of my pocket? Because that's what they did. They charged me uh, nearly um, five hundred dollars. Um, 450 something uh, US dollars for the right to work for them and as I discovered yesterday it's possibly a fake permit I am well this kind of information leaves very sour aftertaste as you may imagine but why they were so um, determined to take money from me. I think the agent they were using, it's part of the same company. Um, maybe it's a son or daughter or some relative of the owner. And basically, they pay you with one hand and they take money from you with another hand. Of course, this kind of thought um, leaves unpleasant feelings. You may imagine that I left the employer because I was not happy about a few things, naturally. But the more I learn about my employer, the more I get unhappy. I uh, hope to get back to you in a week or so and to share the rest of my story. Will I get my work permit on time? Will I get my TSC on time? I also have a feeling that applying in a province can have some benefits. For example, um, they didn't ask me to authenticate my academic transcripts. If I did it in Saigon, if I applied in Saigon, I'm sure they would ask for it. Um, and then I would have to go to Australian Embassy. And I've done this kind of work uh, three years ago, so I know how long it takes and how much it costs. It would be about four or five hundred uh, Australian dollars to translate for three pieces of paper and uh, it would take two three weeks so that would be a disaster but here they were quite easy about it they just needed a formal translation so fingers crossed let's see what will happen thank you very much for watching and good luck if you are going through the same process as myself let's keep fingers crossed hopefully everything will be good